Hi everyone, Whitney Lowe here. And today on our Clinical Insights video, we're gonna talk about anterior shoulder pain. In particular, we're gonna look at the role of the biceps brachii long to head tendon and its role in creating anterior shoulder pain when there's chronic overuse problems in the shoulder. So let's take a look. First thing we're gonna start with is looking at that structure of the biceps tendon, where it's located and how that might lead to some pain problems. So here we have a look at the anterior shoulder region, and we're going to zero in on that biceps tendon. Now, remember, biceps is a word that means two heads. So with the biceps brachii muscle in the arm, the big, large flexor of the elbow in the uh, arm region here, we have two heads. One short head here comes off of the coracoid process. And despite this very large tendon here, you rarely have problems with the tendon from the short head of the biceps brachii. The problems occur with this long head tendon. And let's zoom into this one just a little bit here. A couple of key things are going to be really important about this tendon from the long head of the biceps. When we look at it structurally, we can see this tendon comes up here. And remember, it goes through the bicipital groove. So there's a groove in this bone in between the greater and lesser tubercles of the humerus. So this tendon sits right in that groove. But notice the pathway of this tendon, it comes up here and then it takes a right angle turn across the top of the humerus before it goes and attaches into its attachment point at the supraglenoid tubercle. Now, one of the other things I wanna point out here is you'll find that the tendons are listed frequently as attaching two particular bony landmarks and the long head of the biceps brachii, of course, attaches to that supraglenoid tubercle. But in reality, it's actually going through another structure right here, which is the glenoid labrum. Let's take a look at that glenoid labrum and zero in on it just by itself. The glenoid labrum is a cartilage structure. It's a rim of cartilage that sits around the glenoid fossa, and its primary function is to increase the depth of that fossa so that you can have a greater degree of stability in the glenohumeral joint. And that biceps tendon is going to come, come into its attachment site right on the top edge of that glenoid fossa, but it's going to go through the labrum in order to get there. Now, this will become apparent in a little bit when we talk about some of the different pathologies that occur in this region, why that's so important with the position and the attachment side of that biceps brachii long head tendon. But do keep in mind, especially the fact that it's got this right angle turn over the top here. And because it's got a turn going across the top of the humerus, there's going to be a lot of friction between that tendon and the upper portion of the humerus right here. And one way that we try to reduce friction between bones and tendons during movements is to enclose the tendons in a synovial sheath. This is a synovial sheath surrounding that biceps brachii tendon. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is we don't have a synovial sheath around every tendon. And in fact, most tendons don't have one around them because they aren't exposed to that same kind of friction forces. You see synovial sheaths most common in the distal extremities, meaning the hands and wrist and fingers and the foot, ankle, and toes. That's because those tendons have, have to bend around so many joints, there's a lot of potential for friction with them. Now, if we put a couple other structures on here, one of the other things I want to call to your attention is the vulnerability of that biceps tendon to getting compressed underneath this region right here called the coracoacromial arch. This is composed of the acromion process, the coracoacromial ligament, which is this ligament right here. We'll highlight that. And the acromion process right here, this creates sort of an archway across here. And when you lift your shoulder up into positions of abduction or forward flexion, you can pinch or compress that biceps tendon underneath this coracoacromial arch. And that often is one of the things that leads to a number of the problems with the biceps tendon. So let's look at some of the common causes of biceps tendon pathology. Now, we can loosely categorize biceps tendon pathology with the word tendinopathy, which essentially means a pathology of the tendon. But that doesn't really specify what type of pathology the tendon is exposed to. There are several key things that we see most commonly with chronic overuse problems like bicipital tendon disorders and tendon problems. The first is a condition called tendinosis. Now, formerly, this condition was frequently referred to as tendinitis, indicating that there was some type of inflammatory problem with the tendon. But a lot of our recent research has pointed to the idea that we don't have quite as much inflammatory problems in many of these chronic overuse disorders as we do have kind of like a structural breakdown in the collagen matrix of that tendon. So that's essentially what the pathology is, is it's a breakdown of the structural integrity of that tendon and not so much one of an inflammatory reaction from something like tendon fiber tearing, which was a former theory that used to be promoted a great deal. 
So biceps tendon pathology is frequently referred to as tendinosis, that, which discriminates between that and a true tendonitis, which would be an inflammatory problem in that tendon. Now, jumping back over to our image of the tendon and its sheath for just a moment, let's look at another problem that we frequently see with biceps tendon pathology, and that's something called tenosynovitis. We noticed earlier this synovial sheath that surrounds the tendon, and sometimes you can develop an inflammatory irritation or, or even adhesions developing between the tendon and the surrounding synovial sheath. That tendon has to be able to slide back and forth inside the sheath. So when there are adhesions or inflammation that develops between the tendon and that sheath, that becomes a painful disorder in the anterior shoulder region. And that's something we call tenosynovitis. Now it's gonna be very difficult to discriminate tenosynovitis from tendinosis because they're gonna be, the pain is gonna be in the exact same place. And basically the mechanism of the injury is the same. So really our assessment strategies and our treatment strategies are going to be the same for both these types of problems. So we'll look at those two as very similar types of conditions. Now, one other problem I want to mention here, it's not actually a problem that's considered mostly with the biceps tendon, but the biceps tendon plays a big role in producing this. And this is something called a slap lesion or a glenoid labrum tear. So we looked at that glenoid labrum earlier, this cartilage structure that's the rim of cartilage around the glenoid fossa. And if this biceps tendon is exposed to a sudden, very high forceful load, it can tear or pull this labrum away from its attachment or tear the, pull the upper portion of that labrum away from the lower portion. And that creates a tear running from front to backwards or anterior to posterior across the top of that labrum. And that's what we call a slap lesion, S-L-A-P, standing for superior labrum, anterior posterior, meaning it's in the upper or superior portion of that labrum and the tear runs from anterior to posterior. Most commonly, a slap lesion occurs from a very forceful load on the biceps tendon, like catching something very heavy falling off a shelf or maybe trying to catch a person who's you know falling off of something high. That very high forceful load is what will pull or tear on that labrum tissue and cause the slap lesion. Now, this is very deep inside the shoulder joint. It's not something that's going to be addressed with massage therapy. So if somebody has something like a slap lesion, that's going to be something that would be need to be addressed by a physician to determine if surgery, for example, is needed. Now, there's some key factors that we can use to determine the likelihood of biceps tendon pathology. One is are there any things in the history that indicate a likelihood of chronic overuse of the shoulder, especially if somebody's doing a lot of overhead activities like swimming, throwing uh, things, or, or doing something where there's a lot of overhand motions of the shoulder? That would be something that would lead to a lot of these types of disorders. In addition, we want to look for where that region of pain is. So for example, if a person points to this area of their shoulder, especially right on the front side of the humerus here as the primary location where they're feeling pain, that's a good indication along with the history that we might have some involvement with the bicipital tendon. Now you can go in and try to palpate this tendon and that will often help in the evaluation process with your fingers. Let's just look at some of the other muscles that might be covering around that area that we'll be working through because we do have the very large deltoid muscle here that's gonna be overlying that bicipital tendon and will make it a little bit more difficult to feel. But that tendon is underneath there like a small and thin pencil shape right on the front side of the humerus. And if you can put your fingers directly on that and maybe go a little bit back, uh, you know, up and down on that tendon, that could see if that reproduces the primary pain complaints your client's been experiencing. And that would be a good likelihood of biceps tendon involvement. You want to be very careful when you're palpating or treating the biceps tendon not to go back and forth across this way because this groove is relatively shallow and there is a ligament that holds that tendon in place. Let's take a quick look at this. This is called the transverse humeral ligament. This little short ligament right here designed to sort of hold that biceps tendon in the groove. But sometimes if there's a little bit of excess laxity in that ligament or a person has a really shallow anatomical groove to begin with, if you put your finger and press back and forth trying to either palpate that tendon or treating it, let's say with deep friction massage or something like that, you could potentially pop that tendon out of the bicipital groove. So we wanna be careful not to do that. Some of the other evaluation procedures which will be re really helpful to look at are active motion in forward flexion. When the person brings their arm up into a flexion movement, we want to see if that particular motion causes a degree of discomfort because that does further compress or pinch that biceps tendon. 
There may also be some pain when they move their arm out into abduction. When you compare this with passive movements, usually the passive movements aren't going to be as painful, but there could be some pinching of the biceps tendon at the end of that forward flexion movement during passive shoulder flexion. Now, because this is a muscle tendon injury, if we load the tendon by doing a resisted motion like resisting shoulder flexion or possibly resisting elbow flexion, both of those motions might put an additional load on that biceps tendon, and that could reproduce the pain or discomfort. Sometimes I'll use additional resistance by pressing on the tendon while doing those resisted movements just to see if that increases the degree of sensitivity of that tendon, and that could be a likely indicator of biceps tendon pathology as well. So these are some of the key factors that we want to look for when we're trying to identify biceps tendon pathology. In another video, we'll do some work with how we might go about treating biceps tendon pathology as well. But today's focus is going to be on what's the nature of that problem, why does it occur, and how might we, how might we help to evaluate that. Now, if you'd like to learn some more about how to evaluate a number of other soft tissue disorders with your clients that you're seeing, hop on over to our website at academyofclinicalmassage.com forward slash cheat sheet and grab a copy of our assessment cheat sheet that'll help you shortcut that process of finding out what might be some of the factors indicating the nature of your client's problem. And that's what's going to help you to be able to help them the most. All right, I'll see you in the next one.